Shalom family, it's your man Elijah. Thank you for joining me at Unsectarian Wisdom. And as usual, I'm a wise, wealthy, rich, celestial being that is loved by the Most High Creator. Let's go ahead and jump back in. Chapter 18, The Navigator Who Crossed the Ice Wall. The chapter is Osiris and the Independent Lands. What did we need to accomplish our last step? That our brothers change their perspective and break the conditioning was key. Our forces could never liberate a people who defended their oppressor. In their minds, we would be the colonizers who put at risk their current state and also their lives. The custodial system was strongly implanted. The existing air pollution also hindered our mission. Although there was great resistance from several sectors, it was still not enough for us to act. Surprisingly, several other races visited us with the intention of acting against the custodial yoke that was really exhausting as well as threatening their circles. All help was welcome. The Pleiadians were interested in also being able to liberate the source and annihilate the oppressive races. Their system was close to the second dome existing between the mountain walls, the passage between the mountain walls and the mountain walls. <laughs> Mountainous, the passage between the mermaid lands and the island of death was unfeasible. Not many could survive the beasts that exist there, so everything had to be done by air. The Pleiadians had been under custodial power for some time and had left them on the verge of extinction. Hold on, read that again. The Pleiadians had been under custodial power for some time and had left them on the verge of extinction. Their great technological development of ships and spiritual made them miraculously resist and today they became a great free society. Being close to the celestial lands, they were also aware of some of the custodial attempts to enter. They have seen how they use humans on several occasions, as well as other races. In the lands of Mars, there were several colonies of different races that had been moved by the custodians and Anunnaki. The custodians and the Anunnaki, they wanted to populate the place with several races where they were in control. The local race was undeveloped and had not put up much resistance in their colonization. The humans that were there now all belonged to the new humanity of the last reset, and all of them had earned their passage by the help given in different missions against their own brethren. We had labeled these lands as noxious in reference to the future. The lands that were outside of any circle were really disregarded by the colonizers as they considered that most of them did not have any mineral or race that could have interest to the custodians or Anunnaki. Hold on, let me, my bad. The lands that were outside of any circle were really disregarded by the colonizers, as they considered that most of them did not have any mineral or race that could be of interest to the custodian or Anunnaki. In fact, many lands had been overlooked in their travels, observing them very overlooked. This had generated that many races would begin to develop in these lands, as they were for a long time prosperous places without the intervention of colonizing races. Then in the period of the creation of the Great Pyramids and the exploitation in Egypt and Central America, some humans were sent to the lands behind the dome, together with custodial leaders, but they never revealed any passage, but were transferred with the use of hallucinogens and in altered states of consciousness, many of which were presented to them as different types of gods. The immense land of Osiris was the beginning of the end of the peace of the land surrounding the great wall of mountains, along with the thousands of archipelagos called islands of Anubis in the same area. Anubis in the very abyssal ocean, the deepest ocean known. Osiris, one of the custodial leader, took a colony of humans to these lands, but they never let these humans manage to leave. They did not want them to ever discover important lands like Lumeria or Atlantis, since at that time there were still vestiges of human birth and their great advance that had been left there. All right, now we're on to uh, chapter 18, family, the lands of Orion and the graves. All right. 
These lands were inhabited. Okay, the lands of Orion and the Graves. These lands were inhabited by the race known as Greys. Known as Greys. These beings were hostile and also based their technology on weapons of destruction for attack and defense. Oriented to colonize. Although no circle was known to be colonized by them, some lands near other Orion worlds were taken by this central power. Together with their neighboring lands of Zeta Reticuli, this race had been colonized since almost their beginning by the Anunnaki, who had used them in several expeditions and missions to other worlds in the reconnaissance of the Terra Infinita. As we commented, they also fulfilled functions in the known Earths and then in the Earths of Mars, who also had a colony helping the custodians in their experiment. After they had failed in their mission to control the human in the period of growth of the great Tartaria, where they had all where they had also lost valuable information hold on after they had failed in their mission to control the human in the period of growth of the great tartary where they had also lost valuable information of all the circles that integrated this great dome some battles were fought between greys and the custodians this also ended up helping the human being as well as the anakim prior to the reunion of the custodians with the ancient anunnaki there is a theory that these beings had been a direct creation of the Anunnaki as an inferior race that could serve them for different purposes, since they used cloning as a direct form of, subs of substance and were very robotic in their functions and movements. In fact, these beings are completely devoid of emotions, but the reality is that they were born inside the dome known as Lands of Orion and with similarity to the race of Zeta Reticuli. After the confrontation with the custodians, they had been close to total disappearance, having to resort to their great scientific advance and base their survival on the cloning of beings. You know what this sounds like too, family? This sounds like, uh, once again, Stargate. Go to, go to Stargate SG-1 and look at the uh, alien race that looks like the greys, you know, the big heads and the, and the black eyes, right? And they're called the... Um, yeah, they call them, no, I, I, yeah, they call them the Asgard in, um, on Stargate SG-1, but they look like the short aliens with the big heads, and the only way that they can populate is they clone themselves, you know, they don't, um, they don't make children by, um, intercourse anymore, they, they clone themselves, and now in, in Stargate, by the, um, in Stargate, where they pick up with this race is that their race is now in um, the Asgard's race is in danger of going extinct because they're replicating technology or, or their technology they use to clone themselves is spelling. So just just interesting to throw in there. So check out the show Stargate SG-1. So got some similarities. All right, family. Next chapter. The lands of Mars and their lost civilizations. These lands harbored a great variety of life. The vegetation was abundant. And it is the circle with the greatest variety of animals, flora and fauna known. Its lands were considered one of the most fertile. And it was the first dome where the Anunnaki were able to penetrate and colonize. The original beings of Mars at the time of colliding with these beings resisted as best they could, but it would have been lethal. They were very proud beings and great defenders of life and their lands. They all perished in battle. The last beings committed suicide when they saw that they were going to be part of a great colonizing race. Knowing this sad story, their loss is regretted since the true and real Martians were beings that based their technology on purely spiritual growth. The Anunnaki began to inhabit these lands and use them as a second home due to the proximity of their own. Then with the passage of time and the treaty with the custodians, they began to use this circle as an experiment gathering many races from different colonies, which we can still find today. The first humans sent there, the first humans sent there settled in area, an immense area provided with fertile land, but the conflict with other races that also lived there did not take long to arrive. 
While the custodians and Anunnaki enjoyed the spectacle of Mars, took place Dantes, Dantes scenes and wars for territory. As time went by, the human colony settled on another island close to the lands of area because they lost territory. Oh, here's the, um, my bad family. So you can see what we're talking about. All right. Okay, there we go. The first human sent, okay. The first human sent their settled. The first human sent their settled an area, an immense area provided with fertile land, but the conflict with other races that also lived there did not take long to arrive. While the custodians and Anunnaki enjoyed the spectacle, on Mars took place Dantes scenes and wars for territory. As time went by, the human colony settled on another island close to the lands of area because they lost territory. Of the last humanity, the first human to visit them was Richard Beard in one of his expeditions crossing the South Pole, obviously commanded and helped by his custodial leader, Nimrod. Several soldiers of the U.S. Navy and some invited leaders of secret societies, some of them famous politicians, managed to cross the passage that is known today with his name. In the central lands of Argon, there is a portal with a direct connection to the Anunnaki lands established there at the beginning of colonization. Today, it is a prosperous area, and there are no major conflicts. In fact, it is a land that some humans can visit as a reward for tasks performed for the custodians. It is known that some of them even stay there because they manage to rejuvenate their bodies and get to live long years compared to the known lands and the toxins existing in the, pollute, in the polluted air they breathe. This sounds a lot like, you know, those Kim Trails family. And once again, we, as we read in earlier chapters about those who, uh, you know, they join in with the enemy to help keep the rest of us in this illusion, right? All right. Uh, final chapter, family, and then we're done with this book. The Last Great Plan. I was sitting on the shores of the beautiful capital, El Arca. Pensive, my body had begun to feel very strange a few weeks ago. The sea covered my feet, and my gaze was lost in the horizon. There, where I found my lands of origin that I never forgot, and that will always be inside me, together with my memory, were the faces of my loved ones. Many had already disembodied a long time ago. I made sure they knew my true destiny and my gifts were delivered safely. Otherwise, they would have surely imagined that I had died overseas in my madness and obsession for a journey with an uncertain destination. My body in those lands would have easily passed a hundred years, and I was like a man in my fifties. However, something was not right. What would be my destiny now? Would I die in these beautiful lands of the Republic? The sun was falling, and with another day without liberating that paradise turned into a prison called Earth. How many people had to die waiting, without even knowing it, in their suffering day by day, where disenchantment was as possible as perverse wars and false power? I sat on the cold sand and my body felt as thousands of piercing needles went in and out every pore of my skin. I was facing a pain so deep that my body gave way lying now looking madly at the projection we called firmament. With the faithful companions of every navigator, the stars also observed by loneliness. Many members of the group had already left prematurely due to our damned contamination. Our sick bodies were regenerating very slowly in these lands, and we were only a few survivors of the new humanity crossing the ice walls. I felt privileged to spend my days here, but the pain was permanent, something that did not let me enjoy knowing that many brothers were dying in there without being able to perceive the true love that we carried inside. Thousands of ancestors were still sacrificing themselves by entering between the walls to hell itself, knowing that the contaminated environment or the custodians themselves would kill them sooner or later. Everything was based on the liberation plan 
which successes and failures was carried out and was still being tried. We had won so many battles in there without any weapon, but thought, love, and the spreading of the idea of inner knowledge, what every human carries inside. We had also made remarkable improvements in the air that was breathed and on the basis of all the laboratory created diseases. My old friend Butler came over and sat next to me, touching my shoulder, knowing I didn't have much time left. Understanding, all he commented. William, hold on, mate. The time of freedom is approaching. They began to hurry in their desperation. A new pandemic will strike soon. We are entering every day more and more ancestors to the known lands. We will use their own means. And when they realize it, they will be bent. The new humanity will understand that they are under a dirty and perverse power. We are close to reaching as many humans as we had planned by assuming our responsibility. The moment will come, and then we will make ourselves known with the help of the Anakim who monitor night and day around the walls. This time cannot fail, and if destiny demands it, then we will get as many as possible out of there. Resist to see the glory of freeing our brothers, so that the true path of spiritual knowledge begins. I smiled as such an assert. I smiled as such an assertion. I gave him many notes that had been writing that I had been writing since I left the United States. I wanted everyone to know the odyssey of that group that went through the most incredible places and saw the most beautiful and hidden landscapes, who knew happiness and true love. The story will be delivered. The story will be delivered to my brothers there inside the walls of ice. There were already so many truly interested in the Republic and in these glorious lands of infinite prosperity and this knowledge that it would be the best way to communicate with them. My body trembled and suddenly silence invaded. I could only see the firmament. The iron blues were crossing at full speed. Where were our ships headed? Would it be the time to wake up everyone? Were we really ready? These lands exist, I repeated over and over again inside me. We are guiding you. The battle is real, and it is, in, and it is internal. The spiritual growth will free us all. Resist. Freedom is coming. Trust. We are waiting to free you all. All right, family. That was the last chapter. Um, next, we'll be getting into the lands of Mars. All right. That will be the next book that we get into. Um... But before we go, I wanted to, what I want to mention before I go, uh, check out the movie, family. Hold on. Oh, uh, once again, check out the movie Old. Um, it's on HBO Max. The movie Old, when I watch that now, reminds me a lot of this book. As far as you know how you um, hear him talking about how they grow old. That we're actually in a time capsule here. In in the known lands. So we're actually aging faster than everybody outside of the walls. Right? So go look at the movie Old. The movie Old is like. It's funny. It, it's The best way to describe the movie Old. Is like. An example of the humans. Working for the custodians in this book. And. Them helping the custodians, as as we say, do experiments on human beings. Look at the movie Old. It's on HBO. Um, it's on HBO. So check that out. Once again, Stargate SG One. What else? Uh, the it said pandemic, so that might even sound like uh, you know, the jab. Hold on, there's another movie I was thinking of. I smiled at such an assertion. I gave him my many notes. It had been, hold on. The moment will come and then we will make ourselves known with the help of the Anakim who monitor. Oh, once again, go back to uh, Game of Thrones, family. And it's funny when you look at Game of Thrones and you go back. Remember the season where the wildlings and the giants first started attacking the ice wall? And, and basically trying to enter into Westeros in, in the lands of the Seven Kingdoms. Doesn't this sound like that at the end? Don't the Anakim, who are the giants, and the humans of the, before the, the humans before the last reset coming together to fight the custodians and Anunnaki 
to fight past the ice wall? Doesn't that sound like um, Game of Thrones? Come on, family. Look at the similarity, right? And then what happened once the wildlings and the giants came through, right? They joined sides, right? To, to fight who? The walkers, right? The ice walkers. Doesn't this sound familiar? Doesn't this... Look, <laughs> actually, too, if you go back, if you look into the um, Game of Thrones lore, I, th I think most people don't understand. Man, the Game of Thrones world is actually very big. And there's so much more to it. If you, if you actually go... And, and study more into the Game of Thrones world. Man, when I tell you there's so many, there's other continents that haven't even been thought of or even brought out in the HBO show. There are, there are other creatures on that show. Like, we only see dragons in Game of Thrones. And we've heard of, we've seen the, the Ice Walkers, I mean the Night Walkers. And we've also seen, um, or the Ice Walkers, I mean, and we've seen the fairies. But, man, there's so many other, there's so many other creatures in the great Game of Thrones series, and there's so many other lands, and oh man, family, check it out. But uh, and one and and I guess some other things I noticed about this book before I get off is this. Look, if this is fake, because I know a lot of people like it's fiction. I will say this then: if it is fake, this to me is almost like confirmation to me this this book right here is like confirmation to me and to anyone who is into conspiracy so-called conspiracy theories anyone who studies these these things anyone who believes in the aliens who, who gets further into this study anyone who who gets into religious texts and things like that beyond this book should be a confirmation to you this this book in a way should give you joy it should give you peace because it's almost like it's almost like Someone who has done the same studying as me or as us, the same research as us, has basically taken everything that we have learned and put it all together in a book to let us know we're on the right track or to let us know you're not alone, to let us know I see the same thing that you see. I understand. And if there are so many of us that are coming together, that are coming to these same conclusions, are we really wrong? Would it be crazy that if one day aliens did show up and we find out this that this exact story is what's going on? Like some of the characters, like I honestly don't believe any of the characters in the book are real. But I really do feel like it's somebody who's probably been on the same path doing the same studying as anybody who's interested in, interested in this book. They found all the same information we've had and they've taken it all and compiled it together in a story. And yes, the characters might be fake, but the places are real. The situations are real. It's just different names, you know? Places might be a little bit different, but that doesn't mean it's fake. But anyway, family, however you want to put it, however you want to take it, that's up to you. And take it how you want to take it. But regardless, keep reading, keep studying, keep your mind open. There's truth out there. You know, don't believe me, don't believe nobody. Don't believe nobody else, but don't be stupid, don't be ignorant. Study, family. There's more out there. Open your mind. If you keep yourself in a box, you're never going to find the truth. Anyway, family, be blessed. I'll catch you later.